So um, I'm happy to be here uh, again. I want to thank Carl uh, for the great venue and, and, the, and the whole team that puts a great thing together. Um, they do a great job. So I actually like the, um, you know, the fact that I got to follow this, this panel that was just here really in the talk about uh, you know, big investment in financial success. What I'm going to do today is talk about a little bit more tactical, share a, a few things that are a bit lofty, a little bit like this video and some of the, a little bit of a sales pitch, but some of the things in here about uh, the pace of evolution that, that we, we all are living within. So I think, I think we would all uh, agree and understand that we're living at a time where historically, if we could be here 300 years and look back, we would recognize we're at the, we're at the edge of something you know, that is really a new, a new industrial revolution. So to me, that's, uh, that by itself is pretty exciting. Uh, so I was here six months ago, we're in Las Vegas, uh, and uh, I did a presentation here that was really about, about pilot to production, some of the just basic ways that uh, uh, IT or individuals or companies can think about uh, the, how do you start, how do you move forward. If it's successful, then what do you do? If it's not successful, what do you do? Uh, and really that was based on you know, our product portfolio, the way we look at portability, evolution of hardware, what's available literally for free to start with. Um, and we apply this every day. So we're having, you know, in our, with Eurotech, we're having actually great success. You know, and I like the term rabbits. One of the things that, uh, you know, again, there are many lofty goals and visions, but we are very focused on the rabbits today because, uh, uh, because I believe that's where we're going to show value. And, and even these questions we were just talking about, about systems integrators, you know, who knows, two, three, five years from now, you, you know, as sort of the macro market of what happens to the demand for integrators. But today, I actually think that's the sweetest spot right now is for the folks that can solve, you know, act a little bit like a consultant, a little bit like a business process uh, team, and a little bit like a developer and integrator and show... Uh, uh, customers uh, and the market the way to do it. So uh, is there going to be an impact from this uh, industrial IT? Of course there is. Uh, you know, I think about it uh, near term and long term. You know, near term, we're all talking about some of the same things. You know, step number one, just like with uh, almost any technology innovation, uh, let's get some operational efficiencies. It's the same with mobile apps and a lot of connected things we've done. Um, now let's take that and uh, let's have some new ideas, how to make new money, not just make more money on the, on the old money, okay? Uh, long term, this is the part that's very seductive to us all. It is this outcome economy where uh, IoT kind of takes on a service-oriented architecture approach, most like e-commerce and the web has done, where you can imagine microservices available to you to build and assemble your own uh, IOT application based on other people's data. And um, it was interesting, the panel here again before, you know, I, I didn't hear uh, really discussion yet of really data only investment plays uh, because I just don't think we're quite there with uh, enough volume of data and enough disparate data for, you know, data only plays to start coming together. But the, but the great holy grail, of course, is the autonomous pull economy, and it is the Uber unicorn. And, uh, you know, Carl, I, I don't think it's just another taxi company. I think it's a, a, a social revolution to disrupt an industry that basically instantly changed the supply and demand economics of basically getting a ride. And uh, it seems so simple, like so many great ideas. But, um, but, you know, that's the kind of idea that, you know, that as we move toward instrumented data available as a service, not just what we think about providing in our enterprise today, uh, we're going to enable those kind of opportunities. So back to the rabbits, uh, pretty tactical view here is, uh, you know, the panel again before, before me here talked about, you know, these business cases, what's required for investment. But I look at it, uh, you know, here today, anyway, there's many things to talk about, but today is, um, how to make money, not just get investment. So I, I still believe that the, the early days and the early phases that we're in, uh, the big opportunity is to go make proof points ourselves as an industry and as providers and as partners and even competitors uh, for us to go do that, go solve some problems and generate some value. So the way you do that in business is you write a business plan or a business case, right? It happens every day. 
Uh, there's very obvious components of a business case. You know, we're talking about them you know, universally while we're here. Uh, what kind of sensors? Are they available? How would I connect them? Where am I going to store this stuff in my free cloud? Um, you know, what process changes may be required uh, to support or augment or that are changed because of some connected system automation? Um, you know, how does it change resources like system administration? And, um, you know, so you can put a plan together. You know, how much is the gateway going to cost? How much is the sensor going to cost? Um, you know, what integration am I going to do to the back office? It's pretty straightforward. But there are some things that aren't as straightforward. Uh, and this is where, you know, I think it gets interesting and a little bit harder to create the rabbits. Um, you know, we focus a lot, like I said, on really giving our customers this path from pilot to production. And that doesn't mean, you know, boiling the ocean and writing a five-year business case and expecting everything that you assume today to be true. In fact, I'll talk about some things that are quite the opposite of that. Uh, but uh, things like funding sources, again, like the panel, it's internally, you know, how do you, whether it's to an external investor or an internal investor, um, you know, we see this trend for bite-sized chunks of investment, you know, even within, you know, within enterprise and, and public sector as well. But, uh, but it's not easy always to derive the exact value. Um, it makes, we, we create these nice storylines, you know, we're going to socially impact this and we're going to change the way we do business and some of those things. But, uh, you know, we've got to calculate a number. Some of the other things that are a bit hidden that show up that affect a plan negatively sometimes are reverse logistics and forward logistics. You know, the thing that with IoT is, you know, we're back to, we're back to a distributed computing environment where, where embedded technology is cool again. And, uh, you know, with cloud and with um, SaaS and all, all of these things that we use you know, pay your credit card and turn up your CRM system. I think, in a sense, we've gotten a little bit lazy as architects and, and system designers. And it's, it's been a nice lazy because we haven't had to think about it. Somebody has done that thinking for us. But the thing about, the thing about an intelligent edge is we have to rethink about that, not in necessarily a shared environment, but on a discrete piece of computing that's got its own operating system, its own security stack, its own uh, management stack, and um, so I think it's a little bit of, uh, you know, of a return to some, you know, some of those kind of uh, those processes. The, um, the other things that are hidden are you know, who you need to be successful in terms of partnerships. And you know, companies maybe think they have an outsource partner or an IT partner or a development partner. You know, but we see every day that uh, there's some things that with IoT that look just like another IT project, but there are things that look very different about connectivity and, and again, some of this embedded work. Um, and one of the biggest things that I think is hidden that you start to get to in sort of midterm pilots, you know, you can do a proof of concept, yep, I think it's working, yep, it's ready to start deploying, uh, but the disruption to organizations, and I, I liken it to the, really the, the process we went through with mobile applications that we take for granted today. You know, six, seven, eight, nine years ago, you know, mobile apps were thought of as just extensions of your website. Just go click the website and make it smaller, right? And we clearly know how that uh, has changed and is viewed as a, an entirely different experience uh, and interaction with a customer and the way it integrates with social media and all the other things it does, but it changes and it rippled through back office. Not, not just on the commerce side of it, but the operations side of it, you know, field service and field force automation and being able to garage trucks, you know, at, at uh, technicians' houses and worry about is the inventory safe in their driveway versus they're picking them truck up, you know, at the, at, the, at, the, at the center in the next day. So these kind of things that start to ripple through, uh, you know, we've seen, the, you know, great traction start. The, the, the potential of the rabbit is good. The rabbit is running and the rabbit kind of hits a wall. And it's some of these kind of things. Uh, but I'm going to I can talk about a lot of these, but I want to talk today a little bit about these two. This is a little bit about the business you know, we're in and come from. And, and uh, so I'd like to share a few things that I think are uh, valuable you know, when you think about building a rabbit and uh, how you construct 
uh, your business case and you know, how, you, you know, how you think about what funding you need and what's going to happen next. So, because there's a lot of changes, and we think about the entire IoT stack, and it is truly a wonderful stack. And like I said, I feel like we've, you know, we need to return back to some good system architecting principles uh, of the way all these tiers fit together, right? And that's where the, I think the integrators can continue to add a lot of value. But, but specifically, in these, in these computing devices that sit at the edge, uh, we can't ignore, I mean, innovation that's happening at every layer, but something we can't ignore is the innovation that's happening in silicon. So it is, it is, it is the ultimate faster, cheaper, better, and, and it has consequences. So I, you know, I think this is an interesting uh, view of how much compute power you can get for $1,000, you know, starting back at the beginning of last century, and really the curve and the predictions for where for 1000 bucks, you know, we can get the compute power of one human brain and really, here about 20, uh, 2020 or 2040 or 2050 projected, who knows, but even if it's off a little bit, it's pretty remarkable that for a thousand bucks, you will have the computing power of, uh, of all human brains. Uh, you know, don't ask me how they calculated it, but either way, the point is, you know, and we're, we're a very close partner with Intel, we, we live this stuff every day and we see the power. So, you know, one of the things I'm going to talk about is what that means to you when you think about not only constructing an IoT solution technically, but when you think about the impact this will have uh, on your business case. Uh, just another slight view of that, just to kind of reinforce it, is how powerful the edge is. Uh, even if it's small, even if it's the size of a postage stamp or the size of a lunchbox, the compute power, the storage power, the communication power uh, that is available to us in increasingly low power, small footprint configurations uh, is part of how we talk about you know, technology disappearing. So this is the miniaturization and literally it will disappear into our eyeglass stem, into our body, into wearables. We won't even see the computer soon, right? You know, except where we need physical connection to sensors and things like that. Um, uh, but it's one of the things I will also say is uh, you know, we're in a place where we talk a lot about the intelligent edge, you know, and the questions about security. Um, we're seeing intelligence at the edge today, but we're also seeing firms keep it eh, arguably kind of simple. A little bit of data collection, a little bit of bi-directional control, uh, a little bit probably worried about the security ramifications of what data is there and how much, but, but uh, I think, make no mistake, the, the intelligence at the edge uh, is a sweet spot for us, you know, all figure out how to use. And, and I, I was at CES also a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we have one out here with the net. But I think if anybody was there, I think there were 500 drone exhibitors at CES with those nets like we're out here. And, uh, and the drones themselves are pretty cool, you know, and how they fly and how precise they are. And they had choreographed miniature drones doing a, you know, doing a reproduction of one of the, uh, Cirque du Soleil things, it was quite incredible. But, but what was most interesting was the fact that, that a drone is, uh, is an edge. And uh, the coolest part was what instrumentation and computing is already on these drones. So, you know, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's you know, trying to figure out where to use these exactly. But the use cases already, you know, that I've been aware of and that I, you know, I learned a bit about, so from uh, sending a fleet of drones out to basically run a pattern like a, like a P3 anti-submarine warfare grid and dropping sonar buoys, they go run the drones over the top of, of thousands or tens of thousands of acres, basically with sensors that uh, you know, are detecting chemical composition, knowing what insects are there, the, the, um, the moisture in the soil, the growth rate. Uh, you know, it's an interesting application. So, you know, I just say that, you know, you marry uh, what maybe the edge is going to look like with high-performance computing. Uh, you know, I just think it's pretty incredible. And, the, and I think the, the other thing is what this enables, what this kind of computing enables in a lightweight, low-power consumption model is this little trend that, that video is the new killer sensor. So basically, cameras and videos 
if you could imagine being processed in real time, whether it's on a stationary sensor or on a drone, you know, we're seeing, you know, you know our, our market come to us looking for more and more and more, you know, video inputs and real-time processing of video inside the edge. So, I, you know, I think that's an interesting trend myself. Uh, so a couple of examples. Uh, you know, we're, you know, I'd love to share more of these, but, uh, and this is a little bit of a, of a combination of a couple of, um, of a couple of our customers that are now on a really good path, and a couple of them that their business case has stumbled a little bit, where they started pretty well, uh, you know, met some first goals, had some pilots and some prototypes working, even got into limited production. Uh, but this is in vending, and so, you know, any airport, any big uh, business campus, college campus, the, you know, you, you've got everything from the buy a new set of headphones from the Best Buy kiosk uh, in vending to, uh, you know, some of the Asian style fresh food vending really starting to show up in the US, in the US where you really buy, you know, buy a fresh sandwich, but it's served to you through a vending interface. So, you know, we have a bunch of customers that we've traditionally built embedded uh, electronics that are asking us to connect uh, and do these things with it, so we've been helping them. But, uh, but the idea of what, the, of what needs to be managed and monitored, and is there a human interface? I mean, how many of you see now these vending machines, the entire front of the screen is a digital display. So the idea that IoT is, is, uh, is like machine to machine and there's no human there, you know, this is a, this is a whole set of, of use cases in an industry where where M2M now has a human at the end of it, where you have an opportunity to cross-sell and coupon, gather information with the food stuff, provide nutritional information. Um, but, uh, but you know, a couple of these folks struggled a little bit because of the hardware form factor, things like being able to quickly uh, move to different payment types, you know, Apple Pay, move the NFC reader to different places in the device so it, the user experience was a little bit better. Um, but, you know, we were able to do that, and when we did it, we were able to take, you know, uh, improve, improve those sort of features and functions and reduce the cost. Uh, so this is another uh, a little mini case I'm really happy to talk about. You know, uh, our team is over here and, you know, come see us and talk about a lot of things. But this is a great little use case that's kind of fun because it marries IoT with uh, the fact that, uh, you know, we're becoming a more environmentally friendly uh, country, the, the sales of, you know, electric and hybrid cars, you know, finally has, has taken up on its growth curve. But the whole idea of, you know, all of these electric cars that need to be recharged, where do you charge them? And how do you know where that is? And it's, it's you know, I think we'll see more investment with, uh, you know, permanent charging stations installed. Um, but still, these, these folks, Freewire, provide this fantastic service that basically marries a little bit like Uber, but on a, on a much, much smaller scale, but marries supply and demand with portable, portable vehicle chargers. So, uh, so what's great about it is they, they deploy them, they train an operator to their motorized cart they roll out, you use your mobile app to schedule when you're gonna get charged and where, they sort of match the supply and demand, and, and these things are IoT enabled. So that Freewire and, uh, and their operations team is able to look at how many of the chargers are deployed where, what's the, the battery life, how many cars are in the queue, what needs to be picked up for service, you know, all of those things. So it's a little bit, uh, uh, in one sense, it's really basic, but incredibly valuable, uh, a very valuable use case. And I think about it, excuse me, uh, like the, um, I love the little Cisco demo yesterday, not just because it was about the beer, but, you know, I, I hope many people saw that. But this is another example of where you instrument something, you collect some data and make it cloud, you know, cloud ready, but then you consume it into totally different applications. So the idea of the, you know, the Cisco example yesterday was know how much beer is in the keg and what the flow rate is and how long the lines are, but that's both valuable to you as a, uh, you know, an attendee to that venue, which line do I go to? And it's valuable you know, to you as a facility and an operator to know, you know, where do I send the new keg? This is the same way, right? There's both the, the interface for the customer and the consumer on where do I go, where can I get my car charged today, where should I park it, uh, combined with, you know, the operational uh, aspects 
you know, that FreeWire can use to maintain it. And this is another example of, you know, you put forth a business case, you have a plan, you think you know what the value of, of this thing is that you're going to construct, and when it starts to work, a wonderful thing happens. Back to number two on the near term. Uh, you know, you start off just, just let me just manage something and let's be efficient about it. And all of a sudden, you know, new ideas are born. And so now really they've seen their business really take off. Uh, you know, we'll be doing some more press with them uh, on a few things. But, you know, moving into, into some adjacent markets, some military applications, some construction applications. Um, but, a, but a pretty incredible, a pretty incredible story. But I think, you know, and I think they would say too is, you know, that kind of quick expansion of rabbits, those are individual sets of rabbits, real value, people paying money for the service, you know, was made possible because of the instrumentation and bringing just good, useful data into a place we can do something with it. Okay? Uh, so to wrap up, uh, so our perspective is, you know, we live at the street level every day. We live where the hardware touches touches the sensor, and we live where, you know, we live in the place where, yep, we have another platform too. And, you know, I don't think it's a Me Too platform, but I don't even care, actually. What I know is it's good, and it solves the problem of data management and the problem of device management and security. So, but what I do know is that it will reliably, predictably, and economically bring back data into a cloud-ready place where, where uh, an integrator or an enterprise can consume it into any number of applications. And so the thing we see, like in a business case, the ones that we've seen many that, that have been non-starters, of course. You know, people have tried and done pilots, and, you know, and it, sometimes it's for, it's for a lot of reasons. But one of them is, you know, back to the value of the data. Let's, let's not, in IoT, do this thing. Let's, I can collect something. Let's see if I can find a home for it. Let's collect things that we know that would be value would be derived from it and focus on the use cases. So, um, you know, I, I love all the analytics plays, all the big data plays, uh, and they're the place to be, but I think they're the place to be in a couple of years. I think the first thing that has to happen is we have to, as an industry, provide enough data to call it big data, and we're going to provide data because of what we're going to, we're going to instrument new things, not just vehicles and buses, but we're going to instrument new things. Uh, and, then, and then that big data, and then we can get up into the longer term sort of service economy of, uh, of IoT data. Uh, you know, the other message we always tell is, is decide what investments to protect early and recognize which investments are part of the business plan are likely to change, and in fact, that you want to change. So, you know, one of them is protect the, the value and the jewels of your software development, both the embedded piece, the cloud piece, and the application piece. And the way you do that is, you know, hire a good integrator, hire a good consultant, or take a really good IT organization, and um, make sure you abstract correctly so that your software and the, and the investments you make in algorithms, uh, and, and, uh, and, other, and other code can live with you. That doesn't mean you don't need to throw some of it away, but that's the idea of pilot to production, protect those things that are really valuable, and, um, you know, and do that with speed. So the other thing I would say is in a business case, uh, this is a little bit sacrilegious to say, but recognize which things don't have to be the lowest price today because you can guarantee what will be cheaper tomorrow talked about the processor innovation and these endpoints. You know, we release, a, we release a new product about every three months, which gets faster, smaller, cheaper, more rugged. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a challenge of our market, but uh, who knows when it'll slow down, but it's, it's an advantage for us actually collectively. So the levers to pull, really, and to think about in a business case, and what I hope we carry forward as an industry to the market is, you know, what to focus on, know your data, do it, write good software and protect it. Uh, but recognize that things like the edge equipment, the capability at the edge, what, what, what sensors we can't even dream of today, the value of video. I, I, can, I can take almost any use case that we think about and add video to it and say, if you also had you know, video or imagery or something, you know, what else you know, would you be able to derive from that? And in almost every case, there's something that's either small or very large. Um, all right, so with that,
I'm happy to take a few questions, and, and hopefully that was interesting. That's our perspective on the world of how to make rabbits. And, and Larry, uh, Carl asked me to step in because he had to step out and take any questions. He might have. <laughs> so uh, he's open for questions, everybody. That's pretty good when you get when you get the guy from your team to lob you softballs. That's nice of Carl. <laughs> Start us off. Who has a question? Who thinks the business, who even writes business cases? Go ahead. There's a question back there. Uh, hi, I'm Roman Staszewski. I uh, work for the Zenseo, who makes the uh, uh, versatile sensor uh, nodes. Uh, I have a question about your uh, edge capabilities. Um, so uh, how do you see the, um, the uh, uh, processing capabilities of the uh, edge uh, versus the cost of the uh, communication. So, um, you know, how much would you do uh, processing on the edge versus um, uh, sending the data back to the cloud and uh, doing computations there? Yeah, that's a great question, and that's, you know, that's one of the million-dollar questions, and it's, it, there's no general answer, of course. You know, what, what processing do you do at the edge versus, um, you know, versus bring back the data? Um, and so we talk to every one of our customers about it, uh, but the things you do at the the things you do at the edge are things where uh, you, you sometimes have a you know a local network, if you will. So we do some very large um, HVAC, you know, big, large, you know, downtown New York City kind of things. And so what what they want is they bring back most of the data, but what they also want is to be able to do, if disconnected, under certain scenarios, have. Uh, decisions made locally about shutdown or swap over, you know, in, in, uh, in those kind of things. But the other, the other use cases are like the video use cases, you know, you can't stream all that video back and process it on the back end in real time from a drone or from a stationary object. So, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, processing certain sensors that trigger, you know, other uh, not always on sensors you know, would, are the use cases where, you know, we, we see that. And, you know, the other thing about, about these intelligent gateways is this isn't, these are not one single monolithic apps that sit in the gateway. These are, you know, in our architecture, and I know many others, is, uh, you know, we think of these as microservices. So you can, have a, you can have a service that operates one sensor or a service that operates three sensors, and these things can run, you know, independently. So as you add sensors or even use cases, sometimes you don't even need to touch the embedded code base. You add a sensor, add it, just get it to the cloud, and let the correlation happen somewhere else. Okay? Because it's a good question. Yes. Hello. We have a question over here, Larry. Hi, I'm Michael Darnell with Blue Mountain Microsystems. I liked your vending application. We have a vending customer as well that we did a platform for. And uh, a couple of questions, or a couple of a point and a question. Most of what we do is industrial, and the, the value is not so much in the data as it is the asset that we're managing. It's an expensive asset, and it's worth managing. So it doesn't have to be rock bottom price to connect and get data, but also um, your point of, you know, from prototype to production, we have issues with customers wanting to stay on the same platform for year after year after year. And we come from the embedded world, so we manage that. But a lot of the platforms that come out in the IoT world are great, and then 18 months later, there's a new revision, a new version, and how, how does Eurotech address those kind of deeply embedded customers and say, gosh, we just got it working, you know, two years ago, and we really don't want to change right now? Yeah. Well, that, you know, I, I actually think my boss must have given you that question. Uh, seriously, that um, is, what's, what's interesting, and I talk about this processor evolution, you know, and the power that it brings. But in reality, so it's important to know about it and plan for it. But in reality, most of what we're doing in these early, the, these early rabbit creations, uh, you know, can be done on the equipment and, and at the, uh, you know, and at a price point that's reasonable today. You know, our, our legacy in history is industrial embedded. And so this idea of, you know, these standard products that are going to change every, you know, every six months, you know, is honestly for us, I'll tell you, it's a little bit of a challenge to sort of manage that portfolio and keep up with perception in the market about what somebody needs. You know, and it's a little bit of back to, back to this design thing. But, but we manage and lock down 
Uh, we support customers, uh, some of them military, DOD, and large industrial customers, you know, and manage uh, component lifespan, durability, uh, and service, you know, for over 10 years routinely. So this is one of the things where, you know, we have plenty of customers that want to go ahead and install the gateway and leave it there for five years and go ahead and squeeze as much out of that because, again, of the logistics of changing it. It's not so much do I need the more compute power, but why would I, man, I you know, go unscrew all of those things and reconnect them. So this is the, I think it's a balance of, of uh, speed, of, you know, what do you do and, and you know, early to take market share and build an application, prove you have a rabbit, uh, but we'll support either case. I mean, that is a good question, and it's, you know, industrial applications need long life, um, but, you know, while you're in these early cycles, you can take advantage of this innovation. Larry, but, we're going to have one last question. And, okay. Uh, just, uh, and after this, we do want people to come downstairs to the exhibition floor because Eurotech is actually in the Business Impact Award program. And it'll be good for them to see in the transport side what you guys have been talking about there. Here's your last question. Uh, Giuseppe Mascarella from uh, Valley Amplify. We do cognitive science, machine learning. And I'm very pleased with the progress, uh, the evolution in data ingestion, data collection. I would like to ask you uh, your view on the revolution that is happening with cognitive science, the machine learning. How do you plan to apply this? once you have collected such an amazing variety of data. Okay, I would like to, Bill, just restate that a little bit, make sure I get that question. So what's the... What's your vision of the role of cognitive science, machine learning, into the, your scenarios? Okay, I got it. So, um, you know, a little bit like James said, I don't know yet, to, just to be honest. Uh, you know, we're in the business right now of uh, reliably, predictably, and economically collecting large sets of data. We're all, I think, just learning how you know, to operate on some of it, you know, both at the edge and in the cloud. Um, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about it. It's a big subject. You know, we, we do a lot of research, and we're, you know, we're doing some investments in some, in some spaces there on the side and doing some R&D. Uh, but I think it's, uh, we're not seeing it in practice yet. So thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Come see us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Larry.